If you're a shooter that's suffering with yet another lockdown, I've got a really good tip for you. And that's, don't upset your wife, husband, partner, or whatever, before seeing if they'll cut your hair. Schoolboy error. As you probably know, I love the A7S III. It is, for me, the nearest thing there is to the perfect camera, and possibly even better than my FX9. It's even got the flippy screen that we were waiting so long for. But if I'm honest, on a bright day like today in the sunshine, it's almost unusable. Nowhere near bright enough. The viewfinder on the top, fantastic. Super high resolution and plenty bright enough. But of course the FX3 doesn't even have that. So I was talking to my good friend Mark about getting an external monitor and he mentioned to me that there was a company called Portkeys who made a touchscreen monitor that could actually control the camera as well. And then the very next day I got this email from Portkeys inviting me to test their new LH5P monitor which is exactly the one that Mark was talking about. What an amazing coincidence is that? So here it is. The new LH5P from Portkeys. Now let's be clear, they're not paying any money for this video. They don't get to see it first, and I can say whatever I like. So let's take a closer look. The first thing you notice is the rather elegant floating glass design, where the five and a half inch screen is bigger than the body. I like it. There's a 2.4 gigs aerial, unusual for a monitor, and it takes the Sony NP1 style battery. But what makes this monitor feel different is the very solid aluminium body. I think the LH5P looks and feels like a quality piece of kit, definitely at the top end of the on-camera monitor market. The layout of the main buttons looks a little odd to my eyes, but it has four function keys and an even stranger slider for turning it on and off. Does this now look on or off to you? There's a full-size HDMI input, a loop through, and a three and a half mil socket for your headphones. On the bottom, we've got a USB and also a combined remote power socket. On the other side is the main mini USB for the camera control, and also a quarter 20 in the center. As soon as you turn this on, the 1700 nit display impresses. And the default settings look to be a great match to my A7S III monitor. Physically, this monitor really impresses and the picture quality looks great straight out of the box. It's a very bright 1920 by 1080 display and you can input everything from 480p to 4K at 30p. It's a touchscreen, which is lucky because there's something strange going on with the design of these physical buttons. Maybe it's my brain, but it's not obvious to me which button does what. And that on-off switch was actually off. Yes, it's off when it shows red next to the on, and on when it shows green next to the off. It's probably me, but everything gets much easier once you tap for the touch controls. It starts with the status page, and you can add and remove whatever controls you want to have on this page. This includes all the usual picture guides, peaking, false colour zebras, but also has some good waveforms, histograms, and the ability to load your own 3D LUTs. I found the default peaking a bit heavy-handed, but once you dial it back a bit, it works well. And the zebras are strange in that they aren't zebras, just a highlight warning that won't go below 85%. This is a shame, but it's made up for by the excellent and useful waveforms. There's a really good selection of functions here, and if you swipe left, you go into picture control. All the usual controls, including tint, backlight, plus anamorphic. You can flip the image for any orientation and load in your own user LUTs. And generally, get the image to look however you want. There's a setting control for the fan here. Yes, it's got a fan. It defaults to low, which is good because it really gets a little noisy if you turn it up. I suspect one of the reasons you can hear this fan when it's on high is because it resonates inside the metal body more than it would do inside a plastic one. It'd be really good if you could turn it off completely, maybe if you weren't using camera control or the Wi-Fi. Now, fan aside, I really like the picture quality off this LH5P. 
It's bright enough when you're outdoors and sharp enough to focus easily, and the colours are a really good match to my Sonys. But what you really want to know about is the camera control. And if you've got a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, lucky you, because you can do all this wirelessly, which is why we've got an aerial. But for most other makes, you've got to get the right control cable. For my Sony a7S III, that's mini USB to USB-C. So to get into camera control, you have to tap the screen and swipe down. Now on my Sony a7S III, you have to make sure that the USB power is off and you've got PC control. But now we have control of the iris, the shutter, ISO, zoom and even focus. They work well, all very smooth. One strange thing is I don't seem to be able to get the record stop start to work on my a7S III. It works fine on my a7 III, so maybe it's because this camera is still a bit new or, or maybe I've customised the buttons on my camera in the wrong way. But having control of your camera from this monitor, it works really well. In fact, it works even better if you've got a Blackmagic camera. One more thing. If you swipe up from the camera control, there's another page of controls specifically for the Tilter Lens control system, which means you can control up to three motors of remote operation of, say, focus, zoom and iris on manual lenses. But I haven't got any of that, so I can't tell you if it works well or not. But what I can say is that the camera control on the LH5P works really well. It's good. I like it. So why the long pause? Well, there's a couple of things I didn't really consider before trying this out. Firstly, there's absolutely no point in having great camera control on a monitor if you're then going to put the monitor on top of a camera. You've already got camera control with dedicated buttons. They're on the camera. So this is really useful if you don't have access to the camera. Say it's on the front of a jib arm, or on a gimbal, or even hung high up. The other issue is... At the moment, although you have camera control, you don't get to see those settings on the screen. Sometimes it makes it difficult to know where you are. You could turn on the viewfinder information from the HDMI output on the camera, but then you're restricted to a tiny 4x3 picture. So there's a few compromises to be made when you're controlling a Sony camera remotely. All of this sounds a bit like I'm criticising this monitor, and I really don't want to. That would be unfair because this is a very good, full-featured, high-quality display that would be a great addition to any camera. But unless you've got a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, I wouldn't necessarily buy this monitor for the camera control functions alone. You see, they feel a little bit like a work in progress, like we need a few more firmware updates before they get really good. But I do hope the port keys continue with this, because... The camera control potential is really great. And this is a great monitor. Thanks for watching.